So 12.12 came with the full implementation of Unity 2019, finally, and we are seeing some major changes in the engine itself. If you guys haven't already, I've actually made a video talking about absolutely every setting, what they do, and also some of the ways to squeeze out the most of your performance. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up here. However, today we're actually going to be going through my settings in-game because they have changed with some of the changes to the engine itself. So let's quickly talk through what I think about some of the changes and some of the best settings you can have to get the most out of performance in patch 12.12. Obviously, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to open up the game here. And we're going to go to settings and we're actually going to go here towards game settings. So in game settings, we have two options here. We have automatic RAM cleaner and we also have only use physical cores. Now, I don't have automatic RAM cleaner on. However, there is a bad memory leak in the game. If you guys are sick of queues and you're having problems with like 16 gigs and under of RAM, definitely turn this on. However, I have 64 gigabytes of RAM and I restart my game every hour or so anyway and just deal with the queue. But if you are struggling with this, definitely turn this on. Now for only using physical cores, as of 12.12, .12, pretty much absolutely every single CPU under the sun will benefit for having this on. So if you guys haven't already, make sure you tick this option here, only use physical cores, as Tarkov is a single core favorable game anyway. Next up is graphics settings. Now graphics settings are something that you need to consider depending on rig to rig. So let's quickly go through a few things here first. I actually play in 1440p. But when it comes over to whatever resolution you play, play in the one that's best for you. When it comes to screen mode, obviously the best choice is full screen. However, there's a few problems when alt tabbing and it can go onto the other monitors and things like that. For me personally, I have it on borderless because I do a lot of alt tabbing, but full screen is the way to go and will actually give you way better FPS with less input lag. As for VSync, make sure you have VSync turned off. This is not a good setting and you might want to make sure that you actually have that off. Now, as we work our way down, we're going to be having a look at textures. Now, I have my textures on high simply because I stream, but I want the game to look as good as possible. This is not for performance reasons, however. And the reason that this has changed is originally high textures weren't a big issue. But for a lot of you people out there, I would actually consider running medium or low textures. And the reason that it is, there is a setting in the game that got added called SSR, and you can see it down here. This is called Screen Space Reflections. And so SSR will give you better reflections on water and stuff like this or wet surfaces in general. But what's really interesting about SSR is that even though you have it off, as you can see I do, if you have high textures, it's automatically enabled by default. You'll notice all the water across Tarkov is actually way more beautiful looking now. They've done a great job, but it definitely taxes your FPS. If you're playing maps with a lot of water, you definitely want to have your textures on medium or low. As for shadow quality, I also have this on low. For some weird reason, there's a lot of lighting bugs and other problems with other shadows. So at this current stage in time, even though I have a really OP computer with like an RTX 3090 in it, I still continue to keep my shadows on low. This is due to some poor optimizations and problems with the engine and the transformation to Unity 2019. I just actually have found that low shadows across the board is much better at this current stage. When it comes to overall LOD quality, I keep this on 2.5 due to some rendering problems. The reason that I do 2.5 is things like iron sights and stuff like that I have problems with. They won't load properly. Things like the 5.7, you can look down the iron sights and they're all blocky and not rendered properly. So I keep this to avoid this. And you don't need to have it on 2, but 2.5 is definitely the sweet spot. As for overall visibility, maps like Lighthouse and other large maps, this will tax your FPS quite considerably. So the higher you have this, the worse your FPS, especially on the really big maps. I've noticed a considerable difference. So for me personally, I keep it around 1500 as this gives me the option to see mountains in the distance without them popping in and out while I'm running, which is quite distractive and, and in my opinion, anti-immersive. Now for anti-aliasing, this is a personal choice that you have to make. Do you want the absolute maximum frames at the cost of image quality or do you want a nicer image quality? By turning this off, you're going to get better FPS, but you're going to have Jagged Edge City. This is because all of the corners of every object in the game are going to be sharp and also jittery and shimmery. Now, having this off will give you the maximum performance. Now, FXAA is the least computer intensive option out of all of them. However, the biggest problem with FXAA is it can make a lot of the edges really sharp and it still doesn't help that much with the jittering and the shimmering at distance. I hate this personally and it's really not a great option, but if you're struggling really badly with a low-end system, FXAA is probably the option for you. If you have a better system, you have two choices. The first one is TAA and the second one is TAA High. 
I prefer TAA high because I believe that anti-aliasing is one of the most important settings to have on the highest. Even though it costs you a couple extra frames, the way it makes the game look and especially all the bushes and stuff, TAA high is the ultimate option because there is no shimmering in the distance. All the smoothing is definitely the way that it should be. And for me personally, it makes the image look so much better that I'm willing to sacrifice the 5 to 10 FPS if that. So next up, we have resampling. And resampling is something that is pretty jank in this game, unfortunately. Now, the biggest problem with resampling is if you even touch two times or four times, it's going to murder your FPS. If you're really, really, really struggling, you can put it on 0.75, but understand that it's going to look blurry. If your computer is really struggling, maybe 0.75 is the right option for you if you can deal with a little bit of a blurry image. If you do have a high resolution and you do downsample from here, you can have like 4K and then 0.75 it down to like 1440p essentially. But for me personally, I leave this on one times off as I believe you do not need to use resampling yet. Before we get into the next option, just a little bit about resampling. Uh, Unity 2019 actually is going to have DLSS, which is deep learning super sampling. And this is going to be a really good option for you people out there that are running higher resolutions and want more frames. Anyone running 4K and 1440p are going to have a great time when DLSS comes around. If you're not sure what it is, there's plenty of videos out there and NVIDIA resources. But if anyone has a NVIDIA graphics card, the new coming update for Tarkov, which will be coming out in the next couple of months, is going to be huge for the game and is going to help a lot with this. So keep your eyes peeled on the channel. I'll be doing a video before and after comparing DLSS. So the next setting here is HBAO, which is Horizon Based Ambient Occlusion. Now, I know that's a big word. and You're probably wondering what the hell it is. Essentially, this is the TLDR. It is a lighting effect and shadow and the way that lighting diffuses across different objects. This setting will give you way more depth across the image, whether that's light diffusing on your wooden stock or different corners in different buildings with the way the shadows will sit in the corners. I think HBAO is a very cinematic effect and it looks beautiful. I turn it on low as it makes my stream just look a little bit prettier. If my PC could handle it, I would have it on colored very high or very high. And these are some of the greatest options for making your game look really nice. However, they do cost you FPS quite significantly. So if you are an FPS fiend, just keep this on off. I keep it on low, it just gives your game just a tiny little bit of a cinematic effect and I really appreciate it. Now, I was talking about it a little bit earlier when we were talking about textures. When you have your textures on high, it doesn't even matter if this is off. If your textures are on high, you are going to have this enabled by default, regardless if it says off. It's going to cost you significant FPS, so I would actually keep this off at this current stage and pair that with medium or low textures to make sure it actually is off. All right, so next up is anisotropic filtering, and this is a great feature that's been added to the game. This is in pretty much every single game. You might be a little bit confused on what it is. We're not going to explain the entire process here, but let's just have a look at the differences here. So we have off per texture and on. The best option here for you guys is per texture. And it doesn't matter what setup you have across the board. I've noticed an increase in performance and also a nice little bit of clarity that gets added to the game with anisotropic filtering on per texture, especially if you run this in combination with something like TAA high, which adds a tiny little bit of blurriness. Putting this on per texture will add a crispness to a lot of the textures and actually also increases your performance. So the next feature we have here is NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, and this is a really good way that it reduces input lag across the board. Now, this feature is only available to NVIDIA card users at 700 series and up. However, if you do have one of these cards, you should definitely turn this on. Now, well, you might be asking, what's the difference between on and on and boost? Well, on enables the feature of reflex, which gives you much lower latency times and across the board will make your game feel snappier and more responsive. And putting it on and boost, well actually the boost will go into your control panel and it will set your graphics card to max performance. What this means is your graphics card will now run at max clocks that is available to it and also draw its maximum power. There are multiple reasons why this is a good and bad thing to have this on and boost. The first reason that it is good is that your graphics card will be running at its maximum clock speed which means any sort of time that your CPU hitches and needs to offload anything to your graphics card it's ready to rock and roll and doesn't need to ramp up and down various times within the game. The problem with putting this on on and boost, however, is that your card is going to actually draw a lot more power. Even when you're in the menus, it's going to be running at its maximum clock and power. So this means it's going to be creating more heat. And therefore, with the higher heat, you actually are going to be getting lower clock speeds across the board. 
So if your room is very hot and stuffy, you don't want to be turning this on because it's going to actually drive your card to the max. Doesn't matter if in your menus, AFK or in game, it's going to create a lot more heat and then heat means your card's going to run worse. If you do have good cooling in your PC and you don't care, or your CPU is struggling really badly with this game, on and boost is a great option to get a tiny bit more frames at the cost of a hotter room and a higher power bill. Next up, we're looking at sharpness. Now, sharpness doesn't affect your game performance in any way, shape or form. So don't worry about this. I have mine on about 0.3 because I don't really like a really sharp Tarkov. However, if you do have TA high, you can bump up your sharpen to make it look a little bit more crisp. When it comes down to these bottom settings, there's a heap of them. Let's go through them super quickly so you can understand them. High quality color is a definite turn off. This one definitely reduces your FPS quite significantly. So make sure this is off. Z blur is Z axis blur, which means it just adds a little bit of depth of field to the bottom of your gun. Don't worry about this setting. It adds a nice cinematic effect, but don't worry about turning it on. So next one, chromatic aberrations. I definitely have this one on. I hate this setting. Don't worry about what it does. It's absolutely trash. And so is noise. Make sure this is off. Grass shadows. This just adds shadows to the grass, makes it look a little bit more cinematic. Turn this one off as well. And this next one here, we have MIP streaming. Now this setting here is a life send. It doesn't matter what graphics card you have. You do need to restart after you apply this setting, but MIP streaming is texture streaming. It means textures that are further away will be much lower resolution. And as you get closer to them, they'll render in. You know, things that spawn on characters and scabs ages away will look a little bit like potato textures when you come up to them. But because of this, you'll have significantly better FPS. It doesn't matter if you have a really powerful graphics card or a lower powered graphics card. MIP streaming is one of the best settings that got added to 12.12 .12, and it really does make an incredible difference. Last but not least, we're just going to quickly touch on post effects. These are my current post effects and I've made a video talking about all the differences, what they do and all the different situations that you will want to be tweaking these. However, I did want to point out that enabling post effects will cost you some FPS. So if you do go in your control panel and turn up your digital vibrance or play around with your monitor, you can get basically the same result without losing any FPS. Turning this on will definitely cost you FPS as well. And last but not least, sound settings. Now, I know this doesn't seem like a big deal, but having your sound on binaural sound or steam sound will actually cost you a tiny bit of frames. And also, I believe binaural audio, although it sounds a little bit crisper, it is actually a little bit buggy at the moment. So I would definitely turn this off up until they fix it. Hey guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully this helped you guys understand just a little bit more about the settings. If any of this helped you here today, feel free to subscribe to the channel down below. If you guys are still confused or have any questions about today's video or other videos that I've made in the past, feel free to swing by the Twitch. The link for that will be featured down below. If you want to ask me anything live, I stream five days a week. So feel free to come hang out and ask me anything. If I'm not on there, consider jumping into Discord, guys. We have a great Discord full of good people. If I'm not in that Discord, I'm probably asleep, but I'll try to message you as fast as I can. Feel free to DM me with any sort of questions about your setup or settings or anything along those lines. I appreciate you guys watching to the very end. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.